welcome to Finding Unity. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning, Lurleen. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. (laughs) You going to church today? Trying my best. (laughs) (laughs) I tell you, yesterday I had went out. We have a prayer tent at the church. And so I go and I was there like I, I went out around eleven and I came back around about one thirty. It's a good at time of Granny son. He told me. He said, Where you at, Granny? I said, at the church. He said, You said that by yourself? I said, Judge. I said, So many people here they you know it's a farmer's market. On Saturday they have a farmer's market. Right. And it is huge. And I was telling him what I was done. He said, Well, I'm not going to worry about you, so you know how to handle it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure enough. Sure enough. I, I want to say, that show was a big encouragement. <laughs> <laughs> Your grandma said that for you alone, and it's what she's going to say. <laughs> somebody was there. They see it was a prayer tent, so if anybody needed help, it was somebody there. I help them out, do whatever I could do for them. Mm-hmm. I was there waiting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was still laughing about the message that came through yesterday with the food and stuff, <laughs> daily bread and. <laughs> you were... <laughs> Isn't that amazing how it just ended? Just everything just all up together. Yeah, exactly like a perfect omelet. <laughs> no pun intended. And then um, listen to this. Yeah. Um, when I was leaving the market, these people, they have a little stand and they have all kind of refreshments. They make all kind of fruit with different all kind of different things. A fruit, they call it a fruit bowl. And so I didn't have, I never had one, so I really didn't know which one to pick. So I just seen one. It had like mango and, and banana, blueberries mm. and strawberries. The fruits of the spirit. I was in the spirit. And, and, and let me tell you what now. And then they had granola. granola. What's it that? Granola? The, yeah. They had all of that in. It was made. I just can't describe it. Yeah. I've never seen anything like it. That was the cereal. And all the fruit was the milk. And they had blended a mango. Mm. And they poured this mango over these, these cereals. And they was that was at the bottom. You couldn't see it. And then they had the fruit on top of it. And on top of the fruit were some little seeds. They sprinkled the little seeds all around the top of it. Uh-huh. I don't know what none of the stuff was. The banana, mango, blueberry, strawberries. That's the only thing I could recognize. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that so sounds delicious. Good. Never had anything like that in my life. So good. And I thought about you, and mm. we talk about being refreshed. That was such a refreshing. It was so refreshed. It Look was at just, you. Yeah. It just sounded like you could just feel the coolness and just to run it all around in there. Let me. Well, let me ask you this: Did you did you make that choice based on the conversation that we had? Like, did you consciously say, "I'm going to put something good in my body so I can feel good"? I just wanted to try it. I didn't think about that or anything. But when I got home and started eating it, then that's when it popped up in my head. I <laughs> talked about I feel it. Good. I said, it's, I said, it's just going down and just yeah. refresh your whole body. Look like everything. I was so, I look like everything just cooling off inside. Just, that's right. It, just, it was just so refreshed. And you can see all the color in the world again. I, just, I could see all the color in the world again. It had to be so hot, I tell you, I don't yeah. went back and got another one. <laughs> <laughs> and just put it in the refrigerator and save it for later, too. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. wanted to go back, but it was so hot. I'm just glad to get home and get to just get cool off. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure, yeah. So, I, I mean, I had a similar story, not with food, unfortunately, but I have a what I would consider to be a testimony. That sounded like a testimony to me, so let's share testimony. Okay. So, I w- I've just been working on a project with some people, and a, a creative project, and 
I've been pretty blocked by it just because there's a, there's a deadline and when there's a deadline, there's stress and that sort of a thing. And so when, whenever I need, I'm blocked creatively, I'll go out, take a walk and I'll just wait for the download to come. You know, I usually wait until I can visualize and I start seeing, seeing it in my head and I start working it through in my head and then I'll go and I'll sit down and I'll, I'll actually do the work on it. Uh People have creative blocks all the time, but I've learned that when you have creative blocks, it's just not the right time to start creating. It's the time to go out and get the inspiration first and then go and sit and work with the inspiration. And then when that ends, you stop and you go out and you get more inspiration and you come back and don't try not to get mm-hmm. too frustrated. But so I, when I was walking, I, I was talking with God too while I was walking and saying like, I'm having this problem. I'm, I know that I'm blocked because I'm getting worried and I'm not receiving the stream of inspiration that I usually do. And rather than get worried about it or let it fret inside, I said, I'm going to give this to you because I'm t- it's happening to me and maybe you can help me. I didn't say, can you unblock me? I said, maybe you can help me untangle a little bit. Help me, help me just sort of, if I can just shift this over to you and then I can just calm down and, and I can do my personal work and get back to receiving and just relax and not worry about it and do other things knowing that it's going to come. And sure enough, overnight, I was just bombarded with my ideas <laughs> just came in like you know how when you when your water pipes back up and then you unclog it and then vroom, it yep. all comes in and there's you know it's just so much water coming out so it's like that yeah well, yeah and uh, it's a nice feeling to be unblocked and so I I'm I'm hoping that through our discussion that people are learning to untangle themselves from accumulation every day and recognizing when they start accumulating the negative stuff. Yes. And untangling you can, themselves. You can, you, can, you, can, you can feel it. You'll know something's happening because you're going to get a different feeling. Yeah, and I would say that doesn't take a lot of time. It's almost when you start to recognize that you're doing that and you shift it over to God and you, you shift it off yourself and you shift it into the stream of of the source consciousness and let it take it. You can feel that immediately. That doesn't take time. That's not a big, that's not a big ask. That's a normal and shower. You, know, you get a happy feeling. Oh yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. I'm most happiest when I'm inspired for sure. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm just happy, happy. And you know, and I'll be sitting up there smiling to myself. Yeah, and uplifted yeah. and energized. Uplifted. So yeah, that's you just what have energy all day. When I got got in yesterday and got refreshed, and when I started eating my fruit, that was just just like <laughs> I have a friend. It was something good to her. She said, "I'm in heaven." <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. That is heaven. Yeah. That's she correct. Said, Ooh, I'm in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yesterday when I was eating my fruit bowl, I was thinking about I'm in heaven. Yep. Yeah, when anyone <laughs> says that, take them at their word. They are. Yeah, well, I could just feel the coolness just from my chest all the way down. It was just like, I was just like cooling off, just like somebody had them pulled a a bucket of cool water over me. It was mm. just amazing. Yeah. And that's what I thought about. You know, we were talking about the fruits of the spirit. I said, okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You started, and when you start, I bet you anything, when you started recognizing it like that and you lifted your awareness to it, you made it even mm-hmm. bigger. Yeah. Sitting so here eating, just as happy. I didn't think about it at all anyway. And think about it, I was sitting out there and almost like two hours in that heat. That's the way God wanted it. So don't even worry about that. If he wanted somebody else to be there, they'd have been there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. that, that was your time. But you know, I listened to scripture today and I um I caught up on our podcast and and I listened to Joe have a one I would just listen, you know, just listen to stuff, you know, make yourself useful, not sitting up there just looking like you don't know what you do. <laughs> <laughs> People come by, they can see, 
she's doing something. <laughs> yeah. Well, so since it's Sunday, do you wanna? Did you pick anything for for reading for anybody or for the today or? Yes, I do. I have James three. God read it for us, and so we're gonna listen to the word him, and then maybe we can discuss it when we can pick up things that we we need to hear now. Okay. <laughs> James three, my brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouths, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the devil I listed. God is a little member and boasted things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beasts and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father. And therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Doth the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either of vine figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter ending and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Okay. It's yeah. a good reminder. That's <laughs> 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 a good reminder. <laughs> well, there's a few things that ring out to me on that one for sure. <laughs> yes. What was what, what, the one that is... <laughs> got your attention more well as soon as he said the taming of the tongue <laughs> I, I knew where we were headed <laughs> yes <laughs> that's a big one that's a big one that's, that's a big one, one for we everyone we all need to work on yeah yeah we do we need to yeah. we need to know where we are before we speak inside and in its simplistic form, is if you don't have anything nice to say, then don't say it. <laughs> that's right. That's my. That's my. That's my. That's my philosophy. I mean, that just you know, I say it all the time. If you don't have anything nice to say to a person, don't say nothing. Just don't say anything. Just sit quiet. And also evaluate where you are. Like you, you just may be having a bad day, and you don't need to. You don't need to vomit it on other people. And, here's something it, it's okay to be emotional and it is certainly okay to be angry and it's okay to be in your anger it is certainly okay but it I don't think it's okay to put it on other people that's right man you said it and have them carry it too it's not it's not necessary you don't need to have your anger validated by other people if you want to be angry about something, be angry and own it. Be angry. It's okay. It's fine. Or upset. 
Yeah, and talk to talk to Jesus about it. He'll help you. Just put it in His hand and tell Him, you know, something is going on here. I can't have them. something I, I, it's out of control. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's if you want out of your anger. Some people don't even want out of their anger, and that's fine too. You don't want to be out of your anger. You want to hold whatever's happened accountable for happening to you. So you hold it accountable by being angry. And mm -hmm. that's fine. That's fine. At some point, you might want to consider moving on. Being angry is a perfectly normal reaction. We are in life to have a human experience. And so all of our emotions are valid. We're here to have them. Uh -huh. We're here to experience them. I don't know that we get to experience them anywhere else. If heaven is so great, chances are we don't have a lot of challenge. <laughs> we don't have a lot of contrast. But yeah. here but here we get to have it. <laughs> yeah, we get to experience the gamut of emotions, which is what makes life so worth living. Some of them, though, if we're going to be living chronically in them, can be damaging. Not some of them, all of them. Even excitement can be damaging, you know. Yeah, your your heart can only take be, so much. It can't be damaging. Yeah, you just yeah. You don't want to put all your your bags off on no, nobody else to try to carry. You carry your own bag, carry your own load. Carry your own load. And just get in a corner somewhere and, and just sit down and try to figure it out. And when you get up, pray and ask God to take care of you and and leave that stuff. Just leave it behind. Don't look back. Try to pick it up and just move on and when it come up in your head no i'm not going that route and we're gone get out of my head i'm not going to listen to that go <laughs> yeah so I, I think what this what this piece was talking about james three right james three yeah james three it sounds like this piece was talking about the very things that you carry let's say you're yeah. carrying your emotions mm -hmm. in your bag and you and you haven't processed them into a place where you aren't carrying them any longer, where you're more centered, where you're neutral in your emotions, but it, you are rather instead living in them. If you're living in them, then you're coming from them. And then when you go to do things in the world and with others, like it was saying, there's jealousy, envy, strife. This things, these things start to happen now. So uh -huh. you look around and you think other people have what you don't have or or you want you want this or that or you start to see the world that way because that's the place you're coming from because mm -hmm. that's where you're living from and the main thing that Tom no man can tame his full of deadly poison you know your tongue can kill he can make you and it can kill you yeah it starts it starts with your tongue like how start you with seeing the tongue. something. All this stuff start with the tongue. How you use it, how you speak. The things that you say are every indication of where you're coming from inside. So the tongue mm -hmm. represents the tongue represents where you are. And so how you're speaking to others, how you speak out loud, it, it shows how you're interpreting life. It shows how you're right. interpreting your life. Mm -hmm. And others around you and how you see it. It tells everybody and everything how you see things. Your yeah. tongue. No, that's why I try to work on my tongue. You know, that's, it, you just don't want to be like that. Right. And when you, if you can recognize that you, you're, you are lashing out in that way or you are saying something that might be insensitive or if you do recognize it, then just reevaluate where it came from within you. And shift it. Mm -hmm. Shift it. If you don't know how to shift it, you can ask God how to shift it, or you can ask God for help in how to shift it, or or ask others around you who may, who may not. That's I said this. It came from here. What am I? Where am I? What am I thinking about? Why? Why did I say that? Like, what's going on there? Where did that come from? Yeah, and you don't need to. You don't need to punish yourself for it or go into a shame spiral about it. Just you know, you self correct. Yeah, correct, and it. And if, like I always say, if it hurts, say something, you know you said something wrong and hurt somebody's feelings. Correct it right then. Don't let that thing go. You could just lose a friendship because, you know, people, you know, they, they, they want to be treated right. And nobody should have to be mistreated just because of you and that deadly tongue. Yeah. <laughs> tongue full of all the kind of deadly weapons and, and bringing in stuff that's 
confusing to you and to themselves. And but the main thing, when things happen like that, this person is not pleased with themselves. You have to love yourself first before you can love others. If you are walking around full of anger, full of disappointment, carrying a heavy load and dumping it off on everybody, <laughs> yep. it, which and that, it's not right because it's not helping you, it's definitely not helping the next person because it's pushing them further away. Yep. And the one that you do that to sometimes, those are the ones that could probably help you more. Yeah. Maybe you were raised that way or maybe you're in pain. Maybe you're in physical pain. Maybe you're in emotional pain. Maybe um, you don't want to be helped because you want to stay where you are. And that's what's going on. And all of those things are, are, are valid. And you are at your time and space and place. But if you're listening to this conversation, chances are you're trying to shift. And we were talking earlier about... Lurleen was talking earlier about having grabbed a really delicious fruit bowl that turned her day around completely <laughs> and really really revitalized her and that sort of a thing and it untangled her and it brought her into a really nice place because she was out in the sun she was alone doing the work but this totally revitalized her and simmered her down settled her down and you t you can do the same thing to untangle yourself you can reach for that thing that you know will help you yeah and if you acknowledge that it's helping you you turn the volume up on it and it becomes even bigger and we were talking or we were talking days before about that place inside of us that is untouched by life and anything that life throws at you all the slings and the arrows and whatever is going on and happens to you that's that place within you that is of God that comes from your source that cannot be harmed or destroyed or changed. And if you can access it, and Lurleen was saying, oh, I'm in heaven, like she had a friend who would eat something delicious or have something delicious and say, oh, I'm in heaven. She's found that little spot inside. That little spot inside just got touched and it magnified. And yeah. you can, anyone can do that. And if that's a really, really great meal, or if it's calling up that friend you know is uplifting, who can uplift you, and you can uplift each other, and you take a walk together, then you find that place inside. That's that's the unity. That's that's the bridge to the unity. Right there, your connection to the unity. And the more you do it, even if it's a little bit every day, and the more you do it, it grows. It grows so big that it overtakes you. And so you, while you are still you, you are now coming from this place, this clean, beautiful place that cannot be harmed. Because you'll yeah. know you'll know yourself so well. If you're upset about things and things are sticking to you, then you believe them too. Otherwise, they wouldn't stick to you. But if you really know who you are and you're really coming from a certain place, things bounce off of you. They don't stick. Other people's opinions or what they say... That's that's on them. It comes from them. And it's not about detaching yourself or removing yeah. yourself from the situation. It's it's about being full. Yeah. Well, that serves as a very yeah. good reminder. Yeah. Well, Miss Lurleen, do you want to yes. take us out in a Sunday prayer? <laughs> of course. Oh, Father, here we come. Your little children is right before you again. Sitting, just waiting on you, Father, just to give us words to say. But we just want to shout out a word of thanks this morning for another day, another opportunity that you have given us this day. And Father, you give us this day, not for ourselves, but for others that we can speak a kind word, that maybe we can help someone this day. We claim victory this day over every enemy, over every circumstance, we claim favor. And Father, we just want to be able to give and to help and to bring peace into others' life. And we just thank you for this day, this opportunity, 
that you have given us because you are so good and your mercy endures forever. We thank you for mercy and grace. We thank you for the inner peace that passes all understanding. We thank you for your love that you share aboard us each and every day. Because you love us, Father God, because when we rise in the morning, we already have our blessing. I said this all the time. That's what I do. <laughs> I just have to thank you for every morning I get up. Yes. I always say, God, you have blessed me one more time. If you mm-hmm. don't bless me no more, you bless me. You give me eyes to see, ears to hear, tongue to talk, the use of my limb, I can walk. And I woke up with a shelter over my head, not laying on the wayside. Mm-hmm. It's truly, truly a blessing. We, don't, we need to thank God. We need to look around at ourselves and don't complain about little things because we are truly, truly blessed. And I just want to thank you, Lord, just for this blessing. Thank you. And those that doesn't have God, I just ask you to provide for them. And just be with them and show them the way, God. They may be dying right now, but they can rise up. Mm-hmm. And you can do it. Just give them that mind. Let them know that weeping may endure for a day, but joy for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. Mm-hmm. And Father, just bring that joy this morning over all your children, God. And we just thank you. We just let them see another day. And as we go through this day, Lord, let us be able to say a kind word to someone. Let us be able, Father God, just to bring a little love in someone's heart because you have brought love in our heart this morning. And we just thank you. And we praise you and we glorify your precious name. And we love you this morning, Father. And we thank you. And we're going to say the Lord's prayer this morning to our yeah. Father who's out in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, name, thy kingdom kingdom come. come. That will will be be done on earth earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this this day our daily daily bread. bread. And And forgive us our our debts. And you forgive our debt to us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all sin and evil. For thine in the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You know I love the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> the Lord, that's to come from the red letters. That's right. <laughs> well, the Lord's Prayer is the formula for unity. It, it's most clear red letters of all, I think. You can find everything you need to connect with God in it. Everything. So simple. So simple. It's a very simple, simple prayer. And it's a simple prayer. And then you, there's a prayer in Psalm. Psalm 91. That is a prayer that connects. It just just covers everything to his really a prayer, David. Well, let's hear it. Okay. I say this prayer every morning, every night. I read it. Read it. I don't know if I don't know it by heart, but <laughs> I put it. Psalm 91. <laughs> Either dwell it in the secret place of the most high. Shall abide under the shadow of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Surely, he shall deliver thee from the snare of the father, and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. 
because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Okay, what you think? I think it's quite lovely. Yeah. It's a good one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I mean, now I want to encourage everybody to go into their, on this beautiful, beautiful Sunday. I hope they have the day off or I hope they have some time right now where they can sit and reflect and try to connect with that little place inside and grow it. Or if it's already big inside of you, enjoy it and, and praise it and relish in it. Yes, and try to find a little peace. And most of all, be thankful for where you are. Because God, He knows your heart. He knows your heart desire. But what He do for one, He'll do for others. Because He loves you just like He do of those that have. He loves you just like He loved the rich man. He loved the poor even more. Because He knows they need Him, but He will never leave or forsake you. Is always there. Just ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door will be open unto you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Everybody have a wonderful day. Happy Sunday.